What's up everyone and welcome to Best Car Reviews, I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. Here at Best Car Reviews, I strive to bring the most accurate and relevant information in under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you enjoy as you watch the video, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's get started. The Land Cruiser. I'm sure we're all familiar with it. Definitely one of those timeless designs that's been around for a long time. You still see the old ones on the road and you just think to yourself, man, that's something special. Heading into 2024, they've done a complete redesign, completely new everything, and man, does it look good and offering you a lot for the money. And if you're loving the design, stay tuned because they are going to go through all the trims, key details that matter most to you to determine which would be the best bang for your buck. All photos and information in today's video come direct from Toyota or from Car and Driver. Let's dive in. Toyota will be bringing you three different trim options for the Land Cruiser in 2024. The 1958, standard Land Cruiser, and then a top limited edition, first edition. Ranging from $55,000 to about $65,000 is the estimate for these Land Cruisers. Like I said, that is an estimate. This is not official pricing, but this is what Toyota is saying. At least at that base model, 1958 will be around $55,000. So those are the estimates for the other two off of that. So hopefully if those are accurate, there's a Land Cruiser here that you can afford that you're going to love. Engine option. This is going to be a hybrid setup, the iForce Max setup from Toyota. 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder plus two electric motors, giving you plenty of power. 326 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque. That will be paired with an eight speed automatic transmission and full time four wheel drive will be available to you. MPGs, EPA has not officed released official numbers, but Toyota is saying this will have an estimated 27 miles per gallon combined city and highway. Yes, obviously that hybrid is aiding in that number. Uh, this is a very nice number to see because this is a big vehicle and you know, it, it just takes a lot to move these things. So it's great to see that you'll at least hopefully have 27 combined. Let's take a look now at the pictures released of this Land Cruiser by Toyota. First impressions of the design are similar impressions that I had to the new Lexus GX. Pretty sick. Although I think the GX has the edge on this one, it's still extremely well done and they do a great job channeling that classic look while turning it into an acceptable design for the 2024 year. Most images you're seeing showed in heritage blue with the light gray roof or meteor shower shown on the 1958 trim. The 1958 and first edition models will have the round LED headlight setup and the regular Land Cruiser will have the rectangular shape. Personally, I like the rectangular one better. This shares a lot of shape similarities to the new Lexus GX, which I just released a video on yesterday, but entirely different looking features, but they are both off the Tundra and Sequoia platforms. This full-time four-wheel drive system utilizes a two-speed transfer case with a torsion center differential and an electric rear locking differential. The front suspension features an independent dual control arm setup and the rear rides on a solid axle with four trailering, trailing links and a pin hard bar. Multi-terrain select helps you navigate various landscapes with improved traction at different speeds. Crawl control helps the driver by aiding in braking and accelerating in tough spots so the driver can focus on steering. That is obviously you know, more off-road geared. This Land Cruiser allows you to activate the stabilizer bar as desired as well. All trims come with 18 inch wheels standard with the base model wrapped in 32 inch tires and the more expensive trims getting 33 inch tires. 20 inch wheels are optional on the mid tier Land Cruiser. This Land Cruiser has an 11, 111.2 inch wheelbase and is 78 inches wide. Also a 6,000 pound towing capacity to help you bring some cargo on your adventures. The first edition is said to be limited to 5,000 vehicles produced for the U.S. and all trims will go on for sale in the ballpark of spring 2024. This first edition will also add to the previous trim standard features and offer you a little more with rock rails, or excuse me, yeah, rock rails, roof rack, and front skid plate. A lot of information, easy to mess up. Best bang for your buck is tricky to know right now due to prices not being official and a production model. Uh, not known for certain, but I would definitely pick the middle tier Land Cruiser. If you like the design of the 1958 better and you want to compromise on the interior, then you can save money that way. But once you learn about the interior on the 1958, you may quickly change your mind uh, to paying a bit more and getting the standard Land Cruiser. Let's take a look at that interior now. 
So here are the interior shots released, and let's go through those features. From what we can see so far in pre-production, I'm a little disappointed on the interior. I expect a legend of a car in reality here like this, and in 2024 for these prices to have an extremely attractive, desirable, functional interior, and I'm not quite there with what I'm seeing. 1958 gets you a smaller, tiny 8-inch touchscreen. It looks so small inside this interior. And the next two trims, though, thankfully come with a 12.3-inch screen. A large digital gauge cluster will also accompany the infotainment setup with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto being standard. Java leather or faux leather can be obtained on the top two trims, but the base 1958 is strictly fabric and kind of a darker gray color. First edition has standard heated and ventilated front seats. Land Cruiser will have it optional in the form of the premium package, but the 1958 won't have access to it at all. So you will either be cold or hot sitting in your seat of your 1958. Other great features with the premium package include a heads up display, power adjustable front seats, a sunroof, and a 14 speaker JBL stereo system. Wireless charger is available on these. The center console area contains a physical shift knob surrounded by various button functions. This is a five-seater, and that's part of the reason for the reduced cost over the previously known Land Cruisers. However, two rows means there will be a lot of cargo room to be had behind that second row. So even though you won't get that third row, you're still getting a functional area back there, in the, but in the form of storing things. Toyota provides you with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, offering a host of driver's assist technology and safety features. Overall, like I mentioned, not 100% thrilled on this, this interior. I'm especially disappointed by that they're lacking on that 1958 so much. Small screen, cheap materials, just feels wrong. And for most likely near 60000 this is ridiculous. Maybe Toyota, though, will change things before production. In review, guys, there's a lot to process here. If you're in the market for a full-size SUV, maybe you're looking at this one's brother, that's the Sequoia. Maybe a Jeep Wagoneer, maybe a Chevy Tahoe, maybe a GMC Yukon. There's countless options, and most of these have a trim oriented towards going off-road, which you can see this Land Cruiser does as well, and it's in the name. It's a Land Cruiser. It's not a street cruiser. You can drive it on the street, but you know it's kind of meant to go off-road a little bit, or at least be capable of doing that. So there's obviously an off-road kind of explosion in the market right now where it seems like everything coming out has a trim available to be taken off road no matter how capable it might be it at least has you know a meteor tire an all season tire maybe it's got a skid plate maybe it's got a little extra ride height you know whatever it may be this seems to be really the focus of the car industry right now and it is nice to see this land cruiser is carrying that on uh, i suppose if it didn't they couldn't really call it that anymore but that's another argument for another time and one that i'm not really that interested in so hopefully out of the all the information released thus far this video late thing is out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Best Car Review. Please subscribe if not already, if you enjoy the content. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. So check those options out and join if you'd like. If you have an idea for a future review, drop them in the comments. I'll see what I can do, and I'll catch you on the next Best Car Review.